Hello, welcome back to Movie Husbands. Today we'll be reviewing A Hero. In A Hero, the new film from Asghar Farhadi, the main character Rahim is on leave from jail and trying to find a way to pay off his debts. Starting with a seemingly innocent action, his life begins to spin out of control. So Matt, what did you think of A Hero? So this is my second foray into an Asghar Farhadi film. And the first one that I saw was The Separation, which you had shared with me a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And I like this movie just as much, if not maybe more than The Separation? I don't know. I would have to go back and rewatch The Separation because it's been a while. One of the things I did notice between this movie and that movie is how he does like to deal with a lot of these moral dilemmas that humanity has in general mm -hmm. and how they intertwine with like culture and in this movie in particular, social media, mm -hmm. and how that is kind of influenced by these smallest little details or decisions that somebody makes. So in this film, as you said, the main character is Raheem, and he basically comes across this purse of money that his girlfriend finds, and he is currently in debt jail, so the only way to get out of jail is to repay his debt. They decide to turn in the purse, or try to find the person that owns the purse, and try to do a good deed. And suddenly this good deed ends up spiraling and then he's kind of on a mission to redeem his honor. His film's like at any time you could make the case that a character is 51% a scoundrel and 49% a hero and that 1%, that 2% keeps shifting, you know, um, depending on the moment. Everyone in the film has these kind of morally ambiguous, I don't even want to say morally ambiguous, that, it is morally ambiguous, but many of the characters feel justified in their own actions. For instance, the first half of the film seems to kind of demonize this creditor guy who he owes the debt to. But then when we find out all of that the creditor went through to loan him this money and all the sacrifices he made, you can't really fault him for having a grudge about it. He loves to build these really morally ambiguous situations. His films are extremely morally complex. He's quite a writer. Um, of situations and of characters. And the way that this film unravels, you could almost say that no good deed goes unpunished, but it's also a question of, was this even a good deed? <laughs> or was this just a deed? Wasn't this just a thing you're supposed to do? Is this that good? You know, is he being rewarded for just not being a thief? Yeah, it's it, very complex. It's very interesting. It's funny because during this movie at different times, I was thinking of that American Life episode that we listen to where they interview people that they do all the right things, but still something bad happens to them. Yeah. And I think all the social media, all the scrutiny on his story, even though the basic general points of the story were accurate. The other thing too is these white lies that he tells are almost sympathetic in a way because he's in such a hole with his debts. Like he cannot live his life. He can't even get out of jail to get a job to pay his debts. So this guy is really at the end of his rope. We can't judge his actions without incorporating that into our judgments. Right? Yeah, it's not like he's going out and thieving from people and doing bad things that you would typically see in a movie of somebody who's very desperate. He's a desperate person, but he's not really doing anything that bad. Yeah. Going from there, um, I do want to talk a little bit about like the what this might have to say about Iranian politics. I, I, what's interesting is I don't really know anything about Iranian politics, but I feel like this movie had something to say about debt prisons yes. and maybe their existence in general. They're kind of like these low security prisons where if you have debt you have to go to and you just work until you pay off your debt. But it's not like you can go on leave, so you save up days in which you could just leave prison and go home and visit your family, and then they just have faith in you to come back. But just like I felt like there was some kind of criticism built into this movie about debt prisons themselves and just what they mean for society. That was one of the most fantastic things I thought about this movie was bridging all of these little elements, this political criticism, these moral questions, uh, and just all the characters themselves and their own part in it and the role that they each have to play. Yeah. It's like his sister has a part in this. His girlfriend has a part in this. The person that works at the, the prison has a part in this. Yeah. The, even the creditor that he owes money to, even though he's mad, he has like a role to play in this as well. Like he's so mad that he just wants this guy never to get out of jail. Yeah. So he doesn't look at any positive aspect of him at all. So I feel like there's a failure in his character as well. But all these like 
moral problems that they're all dealing with and their own personal reason for being involved, I feel like was well impacted in the story and well like represented. Yeah. So I thought that was really, really great how they managed to balance all those things. The last hour of this movie is just stress. It's just <laughs> anxiety. But the first half is almost farcical at times. Like there's this great scene where he brings that certificate of how he's a good person in somewhere to co to convince them to do the thing he wants. I can't remember the exact circumstances, but there's almost like a, a bit of light comedy, I think, in the early parts of this film or a much lighter tone than I'm used to from this filmmaker. Uh, and then the second half is when the reckoning comes, I think, is more what I'm used to and there's not much reprieve. I want to talk a little bit about his tone and kind of filmmaking style because this is a very propulsive film. It's almost like a thriller in a sense. It's very, very engaging. And, you know, for me at least, the two hours flew by and I was really addicted to the screen. Oh, no, I'm right on the same page with you. It was one of the things I was going to point out as well is that I was literally attached to the screen the whole time and just it's so invested in all of the elements that were at play. It kind of plays off like a mystery in a way mm -hmm. because all these elements are being exposed as the movie progresses and until you know the end result yeah. is when all the elements make more sense to you. Mm -hmm. And so I really enjoyed that about the film that was kind of mysterious in a way and it, it eluded me for a little bit during it. And then, yes, it became very anxious. <laughs> kind of felt like I was sweating. Yeah. <laughs> like, what is happening here? What is going to happen with these characters? There's only so many ways it can go. So you're theorizing about which ways it's going to end up. Um, and I'm really actually glad the way it did end up. That even though there's all these kind of moral questions that this character is dealing with, he learned something about his morals by the end, which I think is just, I don't know, I found to be very impactful. Yeah, I think a separation ends in total devastation. This movie doesn't end in total devastation, which is nice. It's not exactly like completely it's not, uplifting. It's not but butterflies it's, and rainbows. It's not utterly devastating. <laughs> we should talk about the social media aspect a little bit because it's kind of interesting how in this film, the news and social media is so willing to make him a hero. You know, that's the name of the film but then so willing two days later to just tear him down and say he's the worst person ever with no in-between at all. And that is such a good representation of how social media works, how cancel culture works, how, you know, it, all of this, you know, I can think of so many examples that we think of somebody in the media who is so wonderful. You know, I, I think the first example I thought of is Ellen, like 10 years of wonderful press about Ellen, one toxic you know, workplace thing comes out and Ellen is the worst. Destroyed, And there's yeah. no in between, you yeah. know? And that's that's just not how people are. Everybody is in between. This is not to make a case for Ellen and cancel culture or whatever. But everybody is in between. It's There is no hero. There is no demon. I don't think there's ever been a movie that's so accurately depicted what that kind of culture is like in social media nowadays. I typically just take things now as like, there's gotta be some kind of story or reality, the actual truth that's missing between mm -hmm. both sides of a different argument. Yeah. Uh, and of course, that's not speaking for every argument. Some are more clear cut than others for sure. But I think a lot of like social media quibbles, it's like more like the stuff that's not as important that people tend to like overreact to or overfocus on. Mm -hmm. And I find that culture very interesting and also just a very big waste of time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and one thing you just mentioned before that I'd like to go back to a little bit is when you were talking about how this movie moves along and it's pacing. And just on top of that, I think the way it was filmed and the way it was shot really added to that feeling. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of shots in here where the camera is just constantly moving. It's following characters around. It's never sitting in one place. And I think that just added so much to the effect of how this movie was moving along and how you felt kind of thrillerish in a way. Yeah, and the editing is very fast. Like it has this very kind of frantic style of editing, which is I think a, a fairly new thing for this filmmaker because I remember back, a separation had this tendency to hold a shot for a mm. long time and the way it would build tension is through holding the shot for so long. And this film is not going for that at all, except for the end actually, the last shot is pretty long. And he's using that almost as a way of catharsis after so much frantic editing through the movie. Uh, but I thought that was interesting for him to employ this technique because it's very new. Yeah, and also just built so much anxiety. Yeah. And that's probably why we felt like we were sweating in our seats. <laughs> yeah, like I think maybe his films in the past, there's this great shot in the beginning of his um, soon-to-be wife just walking down a hallway outside. 
and it like cuts of her, it jump cuts of her like walking down. Yeah, the I hallway. noticed that too. I think the previous, like if he had made this film in 2011, he probably would have had her walk down the whole hallway for 20 seconds and not broken the shot. But what's interesting is that the opening shot, one of the opening shots of the movie, when he is going up, he comes to those places where they're digging out all the old tombs. Yeah. And well, that's a completely long shot, but the camera's just following up all these rafters go as he's walking up them to the top. Uh, so that they didn't cut at all, which is very yeah. interesting. But I think this film too has this. This is in uh, all of his films, I think. But it has this sense of like a seemingly innocent action that you would never think would affect your life, having just potentially devastating consequences. From where this film begins, you would have no way of seeing all of the developments until where it ends. All right, so we should talk about the actors a little bit. I may mispronounce his name, but the main character Rahim is played by Amir Jadidi. And he is terrific in this film, and not only such a great central performance, but I think it's worth noting how great all of the supporting actors are. Even his sister, his son... His are, son is so good, yeah. ...are all played by terrific actors. In fact, his son has some emotional crux moments that scenes really hinge on his son's reactions to situations. And again, the whole emotional crux, the whole you feeling sympathy and understanding what his father's actions is hinging on his son, and he really pulls it off. So you're ready to go to grades? Yeah, I give this movie an A. I, I really like this movie. It's one of my favorites of the year. I was just absolutely engaged with this from beginning to end, more so than many films this year. As much as I've loved so many films this year, this just brought out that kind of pulsating energy when you're watching a film. I totally agree with you. I was going to give this movie an A as well. The things that it has to say about society and social media culture. And that's just like a little bit in terms of culturally what the movie has to say. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, just the way the movie was filmed, the acting, there's just so much wonderful cinema here. And that's it for a review of A Hero, which is now streaming on Amazon Prime. What did you think of A Hero? Let us know in the comments and we'll see you next time.